First though, it's time to ask the Vitapet vet and Dr Lauren Bleakin is back with us to share how we can look after our dog's joint, skin and coat health. Great to see you Dr Lauren, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Good morning. So Dr Lauren, our dogs can also suffer from common ailments of arthritis and osteoarthritis. Yes, they can. They're quite similar to us in some ways. So um, arthritis just means inflammation of the joint. In humans, we have things like rheumatoid arthritis and some special um, human categories. But dogs mainly suffer from, what, suffer from what we call osteoarthritis, which is um, basically where you have cushions on the ends of your joints uh, that are made of cartilage. And those wear away for whatever reason. And then you get bone rubbing on bone. The bone reacts and puts out uh, knobbly bits as it tries to fix itself and it becomes a very painful condition. So are there any types of breeds that are prone to bone and joint disease? You know, what's interesting about this is that it's sort of an equaliser and that uh, it affects all breeds and sizes and can affect most ages as well. We most commonly think of large, older dogs, but in your small and toy breeds, we get things called luxating patella, which is where the kneecap can roll out of the proper alignment and actually wear down on the knee joint. Um, in your medium breeds, we get cruciate disease, so your cruciate ligament, uh, it's also a knee condition, it's a ligament that holds your knee in the right stable joint alignment that snaps and then they get abnormal movement, which can lead to wearing abnormally and arthritis as well. And then large breeds is where we think of those more common conditions, um, like your um, developmental conditions like hip dysplasia, which all eventually lead to arthritis as well. So it does affect most dogs at some point in their lifetime. Okay, that sounds horrible and quite a painful condition. So what should we look out for? Um, yeah, it's a really good question. So it's just looking for abnormal abnormalities in movement. Nobody knows your dog better than you. So if you notice limping is a common one we expect. Um, but in little dogs, it can be a little more subtle because they weigh less. They can sort of mask the symptoms a bit more. So rather than picking up a leg, you might notice them skipping or carrying the back end a bit funny. Um, in bigger dogs, sometimes we think see things like stiffness or reluctance to get up in the morning can be a, an indicator or sometimes they'll be fine on some terrain but not others so they might struggle going up an incline or over uneven ground but be fine the rest of the time so those are some things to keep an eye out for another common vet complaint are skin conditions so what can cause these Oh goodness, um, lots of things can cause them. Um, I read a study a few years ago out of the UK where I believe it indicated that prevalence of visits to the vet clinic for skin disease can be as high as 20%. Um, so it's quite common. Um, one of the most common forms we see is one that there's not as much awareness around, which is actually what we call contact allergens. So this is particularly common, um, especially in your short-haired breeds that have those naked bellies. So it can be your little foxies. It can be your bigger breeds that have that thin coat. Like bulldogs is another one. Um, grass allergies is, is a really common one. So they run through that long grass, particularly in summer with their naked bellies, and they can get really itchy. Um, another really common landscaping one, it's, it's everywhere once you start to look for it, is a plant called Wandering Jew. And for whatever reason, this plant is very, very allergenic for most dogs. So they walk through it or rub their belly and they'll get really big welts or pustules so that's a really good one to look out for and be aware of. Um, another one that we've talked about previously is parasites so your fleas and your mites. I think sometimes we underrate how important those can be in skin disease um, and then another one that we see is a condition called ATP that's quite difficult to diagnose that's sort of like a hay fever that we see in people it's sort of more a, a reaction to things in the environment um, like pollens and, and mites and things. So that can be really tricky. And then the final one that we hear about when we talk about common things um, is food allergies. Those aren't particularly common, but we do hear them mentioned a bit. And that's an allergy to a specific protein in the diet. It really is like having another child in the family. There's so much to think about. So what should we be looking out for? Because at the moment, Alfie's roaming around the house, giving himself a good scratch. I fleed him a week ago. It can't be fleas. Mm, no, so scratching is a really good one to look out for, but all animals do that to some degree. So you're looking for um, abnormal increases in scratching or if they're you know, traumatizing the skin, giving themselves red spots or scabbing, that's not normal. Um, if we see them scratching an ear, um, and that it might be they actually have an ear infection, so keep an eye out, they're not getting scabbing on the ear, looking in the ear. Another thing to look out for is just redness, hair loss, any sort of welts or pustules or lumps, um, or bad smells is another one, so they can get um, 
as a side effect they can get things like yeast uh, overgrowth that can make them smell a bit whiffy so just anything that you think mm, that's just not quite right can be a good indication again you know your pet best Tell us more about the new Vitapet range that you've launched to help combat both the joint and skin issues. Yeah, so we've launched a new range. It's not trying to treat um, skin disease or arthritis, but what we're trying to do is sort of bolster support for maintaining everyday health. So we've launched a new um, range. It includes a skin and coat and um, digestive care as well as joint care. So along the lines of your joint care, we've got the Vitapet's um, Everyday Health Joint Care. So this product has just got glucosamine chondroitin and it's got omega-3s, which is what we think about, uh, comes from fish oils and things like that. So, you know, when we have um, joint disease ourselves, we often talk about taking glucosamine chondroitin and fish oils. So this isn't prescriptive, but it's just giving that little bit of extra um, and then with the skin and coat, um, so this is lovely chicken and veggie flavor, really tasty, but what it's also got is omega threes and sixes. So what we're aiming for in our pets is have lovely glossy coats. And when they don't have glossy coats, that can be due to imbalances in omega threes and omega sixes. So again, just a little bit of added extra in those treats. So when you, if you've got these conditions and you're just wanting to give a little bit of um, a lovely treat, but with a bit of something extra, that's an option for you. So Dr. Lauren, if I waved those treat bags in front of Alfie, he will gobble them all up. <laughs> but he can't have so many, right? How, how, how many treats can you give your pet a day? It's a really good question. So the guidelines we've got is that you're never supposed to give more than 10% of your pet's diet as treats. So to make that easier, you can always look at the back. We've tried to make that really easy for owners by um, putting weight ranges and then we've worked out with the calories of the treat what the 10% daily max would be of this treat. So just look at the back and it will tell you how many you're allowed to give in a day um, just to simplify things for you. Well, we will add those to the supermarket list. Thank you so much for your time today, Dr. Lauren. Nice to see you. Lovely to see you as well. And for more expert pet advice, go to the Vitapet website, vitapet.co.nz and check out their new skin and joint range in supermarkets.